Hey guys, Level Cap here. The Battlefield 5 reveal event just occurred. I want to give you my first impressions about what was revealed um, and of the trailer. But first, if you haven't seen the trailer, here it is now. Alright, so that trailer was kind of all over the place. It was trying to depict, I believe, Operation Market Garden, which was something that was actually depicted in Battlefield 1942. After seeing that trailer for the first time, I have to say I was a bit let down by the trailer. Not necessarily by what Battlefield World War II might be, but that trailer made it look absolutely insane and not a good representation of a tactical military style shooter which is what i expect from a battlefield game it felt more like call of duty with the sequence of a player picking up a grenade and throwing it back in at the enemy and then it being shot out of midair which exploded and then took down the german aircraft that kind of thing is like sort of it looks cool but it doesn't represent necessarily what i want from my battlefield game even though those kind of things can happen in Battlefield games, and it's cool when it does happen. It's not happening all over the place. So I believe that this trailer is a pretty exaggerated representation of what the next Battlefield title will be. That's basically my hopes. Uh, so the trailer makes me nervous, which in a sense doesn't make it a good trailer because you want a trailer to hype people for the gameplay, right? You put this side by side with the Battlefield 1 reveal trailer, and I was pumped. For Battlefield 1 like super excited then you watch this trailer and I'm going oh, okay I really hope the game doesn't feel like that when we're actually playing it so um, it's a it's a different direction for dice trailers I don't think they had the same people making the trailer this time around so uh, you know it could just be a stylistic choice based on the person making the video but uh, I didn't really care for the trailer but I did like a lot of the things that came out from the reveal event. The biggest piece of information coming out of this event is the fact that premium is gone. Maps and weapons and all that stuff being released in the future will be available to everyone 
who owns the Battlefield based game. They also said that there won't be any pay to win mechanics in the game, so I assume that means that there won't be any weapons locked behind money, because otherwise you could argue that some weapons are better than others, and if you can unlock them with money, then it's pay to win. So, sounds to me like you're gonna get everything you want without having to pay money, and hopefully that means that DICE's plan to generate revenue post-launch will be tied purely into microtransaction cosmetic items. And I'm totally fine with that. It's a good way to generate money post-launch. Uh, from the trailer, we see that there's gonna be some pretty wacky character customization. Hopefully it doesn't make the game feel less like a military game at the end of the day. I have a feeling the trailer's probably showing off some of the more extreme customizations. And like in Battlefield, when they have some of the gold-plated tanks, not everybody's driving around with that, or not everybody wants to drive around with those. So I think, or at least I hope, it will not take away from the realism or the authentic feeling of the game too much. One of the biggest focuses of the reveal was fortification changes to the gameplay. Players will now have the option to build fortifications, and in fact, each class will have the option to build different kinds of custom fortifications, support class laying tank traps and stuff like that. And they showed uh, the building of sandbags and reinforcing structures. So if a building gets destroyed at one point in the battle, players will have the option to rebuild at least part of the building or re-fortify it, maybe even mount some machine gun emplacements on it. So this is a really interesting concept. It'll certainly make battles more dynamic, less predictable machine gun placement. They even added to that in saying that destruction is becoming higher fidelity. There's more nuance to it. It's more realistic. Uh, more things can be destroyed or deformed in the environment. Battlefield already has some of the best destruction in any multiplayer game, so the fact that it's getting better is exciting. And with that also comes more dynamic bullet penetration. Now, they've already had bullet penetration in Battlefield games. Currently in Battlefield 1, you can shoot through wooden fences or certain types of destructible wood structures and kill the person behind it. But they're talking about shooting through walls and different types of walls. A higher caliber we weapons will shoot through more stuff. So if you're trying to shoot a pistol indoors, it might not go through walls where a machine gun or assault rifle could. This sounds very interesting, uh, obviously with the amount of players and the amount of clustering and spam that tends to occur in Battlefield games, this could also be an absolute nightmare. Perhaps fortification will build into this, or if you want to fortify a room you're in, you can build sandbags on the walls or something like that to prevent machine gun fire from coming through. We'll really have to wait and see how that plays out, but it does sound like they're moving in a more realistic direction in terms of destruction, building, and uh, bullet penetration. Now they also talked a bit about the evolution of operations, which is now gonna be called Grand Operations in the next game. And the, the game mode is supposed to be a bit more dynamic this time around, rather than it just being sort of a different take on Rush, which has one map after the next map, it's gonna be sequenced into like days. So your first battle might involve you paratrooping into a battlefield and you have to take out certain fortifications and depending on how you two do on day one it's going to affect day two how many lives your team has left um, sometimes if the battle ends in a stalemate the next day can be a battle in which everybody's very strapped for resources nobody has a lot of ammo um, so it sounds like the operations or the grand operations are going to be a bit more dynamic this time around it's really hard to weigh in on whether or not this is going to be good or bad uh, it really all just comes down to game balance and game mode design so we'll have to see co-op is coming back this time with up to four players total um, co-op was really just sort of a play and forget about mode in battlefield 3 we'll see if they can make it more engaging and more interesting uh, in battlefield 5 i can't say i'm particularly excited about co-op but maybe there'll be some cool unlocks or time trials or scores or leaderboards that you can try and break or get on top of so that could make it more interesting if they add that to it now to get a little bit more in depth with the player customization it's kind of what you would expect you can get different uniforms there's face paint there's new weapon unlocks there's weapon skins a lot of stuff that frankly we've already seen in battlefield 4 but it just seems like they're going to be doing higher fidelity of it 
technically the only thing new on that list is face paint, but it looks like the soldier skins, the soldier camos are gonna be more interesting rather than just a camo pattern going over your suit. Uh, it looks like you might be able to have crazy stuff like mohawks and different arm attachments <laughs> and other, other wacky stuff like that. So we'll see how in depth they get with it. The last thing they talked about was called Tides of War, which is essentially time-based events and seasonal content. So Basically, this trailer and a lot of the concept art didn't show things like the Pacific Theater of War, which I imagine will be coming out as a later, you could just call it DLC, but they're branding it as Tides of War here, and timed content and unlocks that you can only get during certain content drops or, or certain timed events. So it sounds like they're sort of just trying to expand their seasons of content and elaborate on that. A lot of it was pretty vague, but it sounds a lot like they're trying to treat Battlefield five more like a game as a service where they continuously add stuff to the game people are not excluded out of these services because they're not buying the premium package so a lot of that sounds extremely good overall the reveal had a lot of good information the trailer oddly enough was the biggest letdown of the reveal because it made battlefield 5 look like chaotic insanity it made it look like call of duty battlefield or something nuts Again, I really don't think it's a representation of the actual World War II gameplay that we're gonna be getting from this title. But um, yeah, that's, the, that's my main takeaway from this is that the trailer looked nuts and like a game that I don't wanna play, but I don't think it's a good representation. So we'll just have to wait and see at E3 when they actually start doing some real gameplay and doing live gameplay. That'll give us a better idea. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna do a much more in-depth breakdown for tomorrow's video. Stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing out.